The Indian Independence Movement was a series of activities with the aim of ending the British rule in India. The movement spanned over 90 years from 1857 to 1947. The British landed in India in Surat on August 24, 1608. The decline of the Mughal Empire in the first half of the 18th century provided the British with the opportunity to establish a firm foothold in Indian politics. After the Battle of Palashi in 1757, East India Company established itself as a major player in Indian affairs and soon gained administrative rights over the regions of Bengal, Bihar and Midnapur part of Odisha following the Battle of Buxar in 1764. After the defeat of Tipu Sultan in 1799, most of the South India came under the company's rule. The company subsequently seized control over the regions ruled by Maratha Empire after defeating them in a series of wars. The Punjab was annexed in 1849 after the defeat of Sikh armies in the Anglo-Sikh Wars. Kerala Varma Pazi Raja was one of the earliest freedom fighters in India. He was the prince regent of the princely state of Kottiur near Kannur between 1774 and 1805. He fought a guerrilla war with the tribal people from Vainard. He was caught by the British and his fort was raised to the ground. Rani Velu Dachiar was a queen of Indian Shivaganga from 1760 to 1790. She was the first queen to fight against the British in India. When Rani Velu Dachiar found a place where the British stored their ammunition, she arranged a suicide attack. Rani Dachiar was one of the few rulers who regained her kingdom and ruled it over 10 more years. In September 1804, the king of Korda, Kalinga, was deprived of the traditional rites of Jagannath Temple, which was a serious shock to the king and people of Odisha. Consequently, in October 1804, a group of armed pikes attacked the British at Pipli. Jai Rajguru, the chief of the army of Kalinga, requested all the kings of state to join hands for a common cause against the British. However, Rajguru was killed. After Rajguru's death, Bakshi Jagabandhu commanded an armed rebellion against East India Company's rule in Odisha, which is known as Pikes Rebellion, the first rebellion against British East India Company. The 1857 War of Independence was a large-scale rebellion in the northern and central India against the British East India Company's rule. It was suppressed and British government took control of company affairs in India. The condition of service in company's army and cantonment increasingly came into conflict with the religious beliefs and prejudices of the sepoys. The predominance of the members of the upper caste in army perceived a loss of caste due to overseas travel. The sepoys were also disillusioned by their low salaries and racial discrimination practiced by the British officers. The indifference of the British towards leading native Indian rulers such as Mughals and ex Peshwas and annexation of Aud were political factors triggering dissent among the Indians. The Marquis of Dalhousie's policy of annexation, the doctrine of lapse, applied by the British and projected the removal of the descendant of the great Mughal from their ancestral place at Red Fort to the Qutub Minar near Delhi also angered some people. The final spark was provided by the rumors, use of tallow from cow and a lard from the pig fat in the newly introduced pattern 1853 Enfield rifle cartridge. The soldiers had to bite the cartridge with their teeth before loading them into the rifles. And the reported presence of the cow and pig fat was religiously offensive to both Hindu and Muslim soldiers. On 10th May 1857, sepoys of Meerut broke rank and turned on the commanding officers and killed some of them. They reached Delhi on 11th May and marched into the Red Fort. 
where they asked Mughal Emperor Badur Shah II to become their leader and reclaim his throne. The emperor eventually agreed and was proclaimed Shain Shah Hindustan by the rebel. The rebels also murdered much of the European population in the city. Revolts broke out in other parts of the Oud and northwestern provinces as well, where civil rebellion followed the mutinies, leading to popular uprisings. The British were initially caught off guard and were thus slow to react, but eventually responded by the force. The lack of the effective organization among the rebels, coupled with the military superiority of the British, brought a rapid end to the rebellion. The British fought the main army of the rebels near Delhi and took prolonged fighting and a siege and defeated them and retook the city on 20th September 1857. The last significant battle was fought in Gwalior in 17 June 1858 during which Rani Lakshmi Bai was killed. Sporadic fighting and guerrilla warfare led by Tatya Tope continued till spring of 1859. Most of the rebels were eventually subdued. The rebellion of 1857 was a major turning point in the history of modern India. The East India Company was deprived of its involvement in ruling in India, with its territory being transferred to the direct authority of the British government. The British stopped the policy of seizing land from the princes, decreed religious tolerance and began to admit Indians into the civil service. The decades following the rebellion was a period of growing political awareness and manifestation of the Indian public opinion and emergence of the Indian leadership both at a national and provincial levels. Inspired by a suggestion made by A. O. Hume, a retired Scottish civil servant, 72 Indian delegates including Dadabai Navroji and Surendranath Banerjee met in Bombay in 1885 and founded the Indian National Congress. Mostly members of upwardly mobile and successful western educated allies engaged in professions such as law, teaching and journalism. By 1900, Congress had emerged as an all-India political organization. The influence of socio-religious groups such as Arya Samaj started by Swami Dayanand Saraswati, Brahmo Samaj founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy and others became evident in pioneering reforms of Indian society. The works of men like Swami Vivekananda, Ram Krishna Paramhans, Sri Aurobindo, V. O. Chidambaram Pillai, Subramanya Bharati, Pankim Chand Chatterjee, Rabindranath Tagore, and Dada Bhai Nauroji, as well as women such as Scottish Irish, Sister Nivedita spread the passion of rejuvenation and freedom. The rediscovery of India's indigenous history by several European and Indian scholars also fed in the rise of nationalism among the Indians. Sir Syed Ahmad Khan launched a movement for Muslim regeneration that culminated into founding in 1857 of the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College at Aligarh, which was renamed as Aligarh Muslim University in 1920. The nationalistic sentiments among Congress led to the movement to be represented in the bodies of the government to have a say in the legislation and administration of India. This trend was personified by Dadabai Nauroji who went as far as contesting successfully an election to the House of Commons of the United Kingdom becoming its first Indian member. Bal Gangadhar Tilak was the first Indian nationalist to embrace Swaraj as the destiny of the nation. Tilak deeply opposed then British education system that ignored and resented the denial of freedom of expression for the nationalists. His popular sentence, Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it, became the source of inspiration for Indians. In 1907, Congress was split into two factions. The radicals led by Tilak advocated a civil agitation and direct revolution to overthrow the British Empire and abandonment of all things British. The moderates, led by leaders like Dadabai Nauroji and Gopal Krishna Gokhale, on the other hand, wanted reforms within the framework of the British rule. Tilak was backed by rising public leaders like Bipin Chandra Pal and Lala Lajpat Rai. The Gadar party was formed overseas in 1913 
to fight for the independence of India with the members coming from United States and Canada as well as Shanghai, Hong Kong and Singapore. In July 1905, Lord Curzon, the Viceroy and the Governor General of India ordered the partition of the province of Bengal supposedly for improvement in administrative efficiency in the huge and the populous region. However, the Indian leaders and the people of India felt that it was an attempt of the British government to weaken the growing idea of nationalism and break the unity between Hindu and Muslim. The action appeared to reflect the British resolve to divide and rule. The widespread agitation ensued in the streets and in the press and the Congress advocated boycotting British products under the banner of Swadeshi or indigenous industries. A growing movement emerged focusing on indigenous industries, finance and education which saw the founding of National Council of Education, the birth of several Indian financial institutions and banks. During this time, Bengali nationalists like Sri Aurobindo, Bipin Chandra Pal began writing virulent newspaper articles challenging legitimacy of the British rule in India in publications such as Jugantar and Santhya and were charged with sedition. Khudiram Bose and Prafulla Chaki attempted murder of the district judge Kingford of Muzaffarpur. This precipitated the Alipur bomb case, while a number of revolutionaries like Khudiram Bose Prafulla Chaki attained martyrdom. The Delhi Lahore conspiracy hatched in 1912 planned to assassin the then Viceroy of India, Lord Harding, on the occasion of transferring the capital of British India from Calcutta to New Delhi. Rashbihari Bose planned a bomb attack on 23rd December 1912 when a handmade bomb was thrown on the Viceroy's house when the ceremonial procession moved through the Chandani Chowk in New Delhi. The Viceroy escaped with his injuries along with Lady Harding. Raj Bihari successfully evaded the capture for nearly three years, becoming actively involved in Gadar conspiracy before it was uncovered and fling to Japan in 1916. The First World War began with an unprecedented outpouring of the support towards Britain from within the mainstream of the political leadership. Contrary to initial British fears of an Indian revolt, Indians contributed considerably to the British war efforts by providing pan and resources. The Rowlett Committee was appointed in 1918 by the British Indian government to evaluate the links between political terrorism in India. The actions directly led to the infamous Jallianwala Bagh massacre of 1919. Mahatma Gandhi had been leader of Indian nationalist movement in South Africa. Gandhiji accomplished his extensive use of non-violent protests such as boycotting, protest marching and fasting. Gandhiji returned to India on 9th January 1915. Mahatma Gandhi returned to India in 1915 and then led the Kheda Satyagraha and Champaran Satyagraha. Gopal Krishna Gokhale a veteran congressman and Indian leader became Gandhiji's mentor. Gandhiji's ideas and the strategies of non-violent civil disobedience initially appeared impractical to some Indians and their leaders. In Mahatma's own words, civil disobedience is civil breach of immoral statutory enactments. The positive impacts of the reforms were seriously undermined in 1919 by the Rowlatt Act. The commission was set up to look into the first world war time conspiracies by nationalist organizations and recommend measures to deal with the problem of post-war period. Rowlett recommended the extension of wartime powers of the Defense of India Act into the post-war period. The wartime act had vested the Viceroy's government and extraordinary powers to quell sedition by silencing the press, detaining political activists without trial and arresting any individual suspected of sedition or treason without a warrant. Many popular leaders including Annie Besant and Ali Brothers were detained. A nationwide cessation of work, Sahartal was called and marking the beginning of the widespread although the agitation unleashed by the act led to the British attack on demonstrators. The agitation unleashed by the British attacks on demonstrators 
culminated on 13th April 1919 in the Jallianwala Bagh, wherein British military commander Brigadier General Dyer blocked the main and only entrance and ordered his soldiers to fire into the unarmed and unsuspecting crowd of some 15,000 men, women and children who had assembled peacefully at Jallianwala Bagh, a walled courtyard. Dyer wanted to execute the imposed ban on all meetings and proposed to teach all Indians a lesson a harsher way. A total of 1,651 rounds were fired, killing 379 people according to an official British commission. The Indian officials estimate rank as high as 1,499 and wounding 1,137 in the massacre. From 1920 to 22, Gandhiji started non-cooperation movement. The first Satyagraha movement urged the use of Khadi and Indian material as an alternative to those shipped from Britain. It also urged people to boycott Indian education systems. It also urged people to boycott British educational institutions and law courts, resign from the government employments, refuse to pay taxes, and forsake British titles and honors. However, Gandhiji called off the movement because he was scared after the Chauri Chaura incident which saw death of 22 policemen at the hands of angry mob that India would descend into anarchy. Gandhiji was sentenced in 1922 to six years in prison but was released after serving two years. On his release from the prison, he set up Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad on the banks of river Sabarmati. He established newspapers Young India, inaugurating a series of reforms aimed at rural poor and untouchables. This era saw emergence of new leaders in India, including C. Rajgopalchari, Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, Subhachandra Bose, and others. Many women participated in the movement, including Kasturba Gandhi, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Muthulakshmi Reddy, Aruna Asafali, and many others. C. Rajkopalchari was an Indian nationalist who participated in the agitations against role attack, joining the non-cooperation movement, the Vaikum Satyagraha and civil disobedience movement. Following Indian rejection of the recommendation in the Simon Commission, an all-party conference was held in Mumbai in May 1920 intended to instill a sense of liberalization among the people. The conference appointed a drafting committee under Motilal Nehru to draw up the constitution for India. The Kolkata session of Indian National Congress asked the British government to accord dominion status to India by December 1929 or a countrywide civil disobedience movement would be launched. Under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru at its historic Lahore session in December 1929, Indian National Congress adopted the objective of complete self-rule. It authorized the working committee to launch civil disobedience movement throughout the country. It was decided that 26 January 1930 would be observed all over India as Purna Swaraj Day. In London, India House under patronage of Shamaji Krishnavarma came under increasing scrutiny for championing and justifying violence in the cause of Indian nationalism, which found in Indian students in Britain. In 1907, through Indian nationalist Madame Bikaji Rustam Kama's links to Russian revolutionary Nicholas Safransky, Indian group, including Bengal revolutionaries as well as India House under Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, were able to obtain manual of manufacturing bombs. Madan Lal Dhingra, while studying in England, assassinated William Hutt Curzon Vialli. Pandurang Mahadev Bapat acquired the title of Senapati, meaning commander, as a consequence of his leadership during Bolshi Satyagraha. Chandrasekhar Azad reorganized Hindustan Republican Association under its new name Hindustan Socialist Republic Army after the death of its founder Ram Prasad Bismil. In Bengal, 
This saw reorganization of groups linked to the Samiti under leadership of Surya Sen and Hemachandra Kango. Surya Sen is best known for leading the 1930 Chittagong Amri raid. In Northern India, remnant of Punjab and Bengali revolutionary organizations reorganized, notably under Sachindrana Sanyal founding the Hindustan Republican Association with Chandrasekhar Azad in North India. A number of leaders from Bengal, especially Subhachandra Bose, were accused by the British of having links with and allowing patronage to the revolutionary organizations during this time. Sachitrana Sanyal mentored revolutionaries in Hindustan Socialist Republic Army, including Bhagat Singh and Jatindranath Das, among others, including arms training and how to make bombs. Bhagat Singh and Patukeshwar Dutt, three were bombed inside Central Legislative Assembly on 8 April 1929, protesting against the passage of Public Safety Bill and a Trade Dispute Bill while raising the slogans In Kilab Zindabad. Though no one was killed or injured in the bomb incident, Bhagat Singh surrendered after bombing incident and a trial was conducted. Sukhadev and Rajguru were also arrested by the British police during search operations after the bombing incident. Following the trial of Central Assembly bomb case, Bhagat Singh, Sukhadev and Rajguru were hanged in 1931. On 13th March 1914, Udham Singh shot Michael O'Dyer, generally held responsible for Amritsar massacre in London. In 1920s, Alluri Sitarama Raju led ill-fated Rampa rebellion of 1922-24 during which a band of tribal leaders and other sympathizers fought against the British Raj. Local people referred him as Manyam Virurudu. Inspired by the patriotic jail of revolutionaries in Bengal, Raju raided police stations, stole guns and ammunition and killed several British army officers including Scott Coward. Raju was eventually trapped by the British in the forest of Chintapalli, then near tied to a tree and shot dead. Jatindranath Das was arrested for revolutionary activities and was imprisoned in Lahore jail. He died in Lahore jail after 63-day hunger strike. Bikaji Kama raised the flag of Indian independence in Stuttgart, Germany. Lal Bahadur Shastri was sent to prison for one year for offering individual satyagraha support to the independence movement. British government had imposed salt tax wide 1882 Salt Act. Thus, Indians were not able to sell salt independently. Mahatma Gandhi began a march from Sabarmati Ashram to a coastal village Dandi on 12th March 1930. And on 6th April, Mahatma Gandhi with his 50,000 odd followers broke the salt law by generating salt from seawater, thus disobeying tax payment. This resulted in Gandhi Irwin Pact, which ended the tyrannical laws. Gandhiji participated in Second Roundtable Conference in London. India's entry into the Second World War was strongly opposed by Subhash Chandra Bose. He was elected President of the Congress in 1938 and 1939, but later resigned to form his own wing known as Forward Bloc. In 1940, the British authorities in Calcutta placed Subhash Chandra Bose under house arrest. However, he escaped and made his way through Afghanistan, through Nazi Germany and seek Hitler's and Mussolini's help for raising an army to fight the British. After dramatic decline in Germany's military fortunes, the German land invasion of India became untenable. Hitler advised Bose to go to Japan where a submarine was arranged to transport Bose, was ferried to Japanese Southeast Asia, where he formed the Azad Hind government. The provincial free Indian government in exile was thus set up with the help of Japanese. Its aim was to reach India as a fighting force that would build on public resentment to inspire revolt among Indian soldiers of the Raj. The Indian National Army was to see action against Alice including the British Indian Army, laying siege to Imphal and Kohima with the Japanese 15th Army. During the war, Andaman and Nicobar Islands were captured by the Japanese and handed them to 
Indian National Army. However, due to disrupted logistics, poor supplies from Japanese, and lack of training, Azad Hind Fouls surrendered unconditionally to the British in Singapore in 1945. Meanwhile, with a growing dissatisfaction among Second World War Indian troops, especially in Europe and among the Indian civil population in the subcontinent, British government sent a delegation to India under Stafford Capes, which came to be known as Scripps Mission. The purpose of the mission was to negotiate with the Indian National Congress to deal to obtain a total cooperation during the war in the return of progressive devolution and distribution of power from Crown and Viceroy to the elected Indian legislature. However, the talks failed, having failed to address the key demands of a time frame towards self-government and of the definition of the powers to be relinquished, essentially portraying an offer of limited dominion status that was wholly unacceptable to the Indian movement. To force the British Raj to meet its demand and obtain definitive word on total self-rule, Congress took the decision to launch Quit India Movement. The Quit India Movement, Bharat Chodo Andolan or August Movement was a civil disobedience movement in India which commenced on 8 August 1942 in response to the Gandhiji's call for immediate self-rule by Indians and against sending Indians to the Second World War. He asked all teachers to leave their schools and other Indians to leave their respective jobs and take part in this movement. Due to Gandhiji's political influence, his request was followed with a significant proportion of the population. This movement was where Gandhiji gave his famous slogan, Do or Die. The aim of the movement was to force British government to the negotiating tables by holding the Ali's war effort hostage. The call for determined but possessive, the British, already alarmed by the advances of Japanese army to the India-Burma border, responded next day by imprisoning Gandhiji at Aga Khan Palace in Pune. All the major leaders of the Indian National Congress were arrested and detained. As the masses were leaderless, the protests took a violent turn. Large-scale protests and demonstrations were held all over the country. On 3rd June 1947, Viscount Louis Mountbatten, the last British Governor General of India, announced the partitioning of British India into India and Pakistan. With the speedy passage of Indian Independence Act 1947 at 11.57 p.m. on 14th August 1947, Pakistan was declared a separate nation. And then at 12.02 a.m. on 15th August 1947, India became a sovereign democratic nation. Eventually. 15th August became Independence Day for India, marking the end of the British rule. Sardar Vallabhai Patel invited Lord Mountbatten to continue as Governor General of India during the period of transition. On 15th August 1947, the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, raised the Indian national flag above the Lahori Gate of Red Fort in New Delhi. Sardar Patel took the responsibility of bringing 565 princely states into the Union of India, steering efforts by his iron fist in velvet glow policies, exemplified by use of military force to integrate Junagar and Hyderabad states into India. The Constituent Assembly, headed by prominent lawyer, reformer and Dalit leader, Baba Saheb Ambedkar, was tasked with creating the Constitution of Free India. And on 26 January 1950, the Republic of India was officially proclaimed. French ceded the Chandranagar in 1951 and Pondicherry and its remaining Indian colonies by 1954. The Indian troops invaded and annexed Goa and Portugal's other Indian enclaves in 1961. And Sikkim voted to join the Indian Union in 1975 after Indian victory over China in Nathula and Chola.